it's a live on YouTube, which I now see and I'm hitting the go live button. So Josh, whenever you are ready, take it away. Great. What is that? Trust, but verify. Isn't that something? What is that from? Is that a journalism sort of a? a, Yeah, (laughs) something like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which is definitely what 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 you see a lot of on YouTube is uh, hardcore journalism. Lots of verified (laughs) information on this platform. (laughs) All right. Well, let's do a proper start here then. Hail cheaters! Welcome to the Always Cheating Podcast. My name is Josh. I'm here with Brandon. Brandon, how are you? I'm good, Josh. I am riding on the fumes of seeing you in person in New York this weekend. That's right. Uh, what what will make of game week 32 as we sort of process it and look ahead to the the final six game weeks? I'm still not sure how I feel about how things went this game week. So let's I mean, we can kind of me. work through that. <laughs> I'm I'm zero for two. We had a two game week week, and I and I'm 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 zero for two. I've I've uh, reduced my rank by fifty percent. Um, I had just <laughs> crawled into the top three hundred k. Uh, now I've somehow find myself at four fifty, and uh, you might actually like you're you're on pace to to overtake me now, which I thought at the very least I had a nice little cushion on you. Um, <laughs> and I think you 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 might have. Uh, I think I'm still ahead. But just like just by a hair at this point, he right thinks. Now. He thinks. He says. Are, he knows. I don't even know anymore. Are you? Are you? <laughs> I, I actually don't. Pro- I, yeah. I think we're about fifteen points uh, away from Still. each other. So, like, okay. and that's that's interesting to analyze. Where you're, you just said you're OR, and I'm uh, languishing at five hundred and seventy six k. But I feel like mm-hmm. yes, you're very much within touching distance. So, as people start to think about what are my rank goals for the six game weeks left. You know, you can jump up a lot if somehow you get a magic hat trick from one of your midfielders. I was I continually do the math of what would it have been like if I had had the Ollie Watkins Hall and now the Phil Foden Hall. I'm just going to have as my background, Josh, I just should create the what could have been Hall of Fame. And uh, we'll yeah. put Phil and we'll put Ollie. And I think the the ones that have really stung this season, I I wonder if a lot of managers listening will relate are The players that you had. And those always sting worse than the players that you didn't have. So if you look at the results of Game Week 32, one thing's for sure, there was no standout player this game week. I guess maybe Ollie Watkins was was with his 13-pointer. Yeah, who was the the king of the Game Week, Brandon? I I have to take a look here. I wonder if it is Watkins, right? It's, because uh, had... it's Kevin of Bruyne. Oh, of course, yeah. KDB. Yeah. City just yeah. like an eternal blind spot. It, you know, it's just like fantasy autopilot with them. I know one yeah. thing for sure, Josh. Never get a Manchester City goalkeeper or defender. You know, that's a fact. You take that yeah. to the bank. Should we add Liverpool to that too? Uh, outside of Trent. <laughs> My well, goodness, yeah, you're, what you're, a waste of money. Uh, you're feeling it. Dyke. It's ridiculous. I mean, and Connor Bradley was, I think, like a sensible way in because he's so cheap and he's just been punishing yeah. owners the last couple of game weeks. I wonder, yeah, I wonder if we're guilty. Uh, you know, I, I, I certainly was guilty in 31 and 32 of of maybe over um, overdoing it with the sort of target Sheffield United approach, um, both in terms of making, spending a lot of, points uh to acquire Salah and Van Dyke for 31 complete yeah. flop there and then um and then captaining Palmer uh in 32 and now granted that it didn't really hurt me that much uh because nobody really went off I mean I guess I guess ultimately Holland would have been the best the best pick of the kind of all the big picks but right we're talking I beg about to differ, Josh it was Salah yeah. who got the exact same points as Holland, but I went Salah. And I was trying to do the reverse True. logic of yep. the Cole Palmer captaincy was this guy uh, had a huge haul against Manchester United. So I'm thinking less who's Cole Palmer have next. I'm thinking more who's playing Manchester United next. because They, are, right. they, right. um, they yeah. have these devast- uh, uh, devastatingly poor um performances occasionally now um kudos to manchester united fans because you know they 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 did what they could against liverpool at old trafford um better than i expected and it's a similar thing with sheffield united also the host team where they put up a bigger fight against chelsea and so then you start to see well 
all of these flaws that we know about Chelsea kind of coming to the fore. Whenever yeah. Cole Palmer doesn't get a double digit return, the narrative that's left is, you yeah, know, yeah. what, what is the deal it with was, Chelsea again? Yeah. I mean, it was, it was honestly a pretty tr- tricky week for the captaincy, right? Because the, the, the best options in Sala, Palmer, Holland, they were all away. I guess Sun um, was certainly an option too. He was home, but you know, Spurs have been putting up some really up and down performances. They're yeah. a little less, um, reliable, maybe. Um, that, although Sun has been very good at home, and he did pick up an assist. Um, but yeah, I think that uh, you know Saka might have actually been. Well, he you know he did outscore all of them, but I think that the problem with him is it wasn't even clear if he was going to start this match, right? He didn't play a minute in game week thirty one, so made it a little a little you know dicey what to do there. But yeah, I'm just yeah. feeling a little. Um, you know, it's just if you you know there, I feel like over the course of an FPL season, you can talk all you want about template teams and similarities and things like that. But I'm actually finding that I, there are a number of times when I've had pretty tricky decisions this season and yeah. it's basically come down to kind of 50, 50. Do I go with X? Do I go with Y? And um, I, you know, I just feel like I'm getting those 50, 50s wrong right now. And, um, and I think that I'm, and to me, they're, 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 they honestly are pretty close to 50, 50, right? I don't think I'm taking, I don't think I'm making the wrong decision. Right. I'm, I'm in a position where it's really quite close. And obviously um, we talk about this a lot on the pod, but, you know, you can't actually it was an obvious point. But like sometimes it's like you can try to like look at these numbers and look at the teams and look at the bookies odds and all this stuff. And it's like you can start to trick yourself into believing that you can like literally like see the future. Right. <laughs> that you can like literally figure it out as if like, as if like there's a script for the weekend <laughs> that like, you just uh-huh. need to like find, find where it's written. Right. But, but it isn't right. Like it's, it's very, it's, it's you know, the difference between that, you know, sometimes someone says it's a crossbar when, you know, and that's a goal on another different day. And there's just sort of, you know, you can, you can make good decisions and still um, have things not go super well. Right. And I systems think, and moments, Josh. Yeah, so we, exactly. we say that occasionally yeah. and what, what that means is, yeah, uh, it's like the logic of football. You set up a system, a manager goes out there and sets up a system. And then the hope is that moments come out of that yeah. Uh, system. Yeah. And that's how you win matches. And that's how you win yeah. fantasy is you have to have those moments. Yeah. And I'm I I've sort of, you know, transitioned uh, to be for being frustrated this season to being somewhat more, well, still very frustrated, certainly. But like um, I've gotten a little more philosophical. I would say the last week has been a wake up call for me uh, in terms of my own um, kind of personal level of engagement with my own, with like the management of my own fantasy team. Right. Like, like the podcast is something that I always, not to get too like meta here. Right. But like the, like the, the, you and I talking a couple times a week doing podcasts. It's it's always very important to me. Yeah. Yeah. Hard not to get meta. It's always, but it's always on my mind. I was thinking about the podcast, how to, you know, Oh, how can we, uh, uh, how can we make it more fun to listen to whatever, right? But yeah. like the actual management of my team, I think I've been like a little, I have not taken as seriously, which is kind of hilarious considering this pod is literally like about playing a game as well as you can, right? But like, mm-hmm. um, or at least ostensibly, that's what it's about, right? I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not sure our pod is always about that. But like, in theory, that's what the podcast is about. But I have found that I'm just not making transfers early enough. Right. And so like team value has hurt me a ton mm-hmm. this season. Um, I've sat on my hands a little too often, sort of kind of doing honestly, no offense, but like something I, I I've seen you do in previous seasons, which is to sort of wait for the perfect transfers. Right. So it's like, you have a good sensible transfer you could make this week, but you want to hold off until next week so that you have two transfers and you can make the perfect moves, you know? Sure. And I feel like that's, um, I feel like that that really like this week was an example of that where I really just didn't need to start Van Dyke away to Man United, right? And I sort of told myself a story and I but it would have been so easy to move a stupid onto an Everton defender, right? And that that's a six or seven point swing right there. Um, you know, if I make that move. And I was just sort of like, well, but I can make it perfect next week. I can sure. get these high, these amazing defenders from the best teams, and then I'm set up for the double and 34 even better. You know, and it was like it's sort of I like it's like if you want to not make a decision in fantasy, like in FPL, it's, it's very easy to start to tell yourself a story, right. That like, that like allows you to not make any choices, right. Where you're like, you know what, 
I, it's like, I just, it, I'll, I'll have so much flexibility if I just give myself one more week. Right. But it's like when you miss the cumulative effect of missing out on these seven pointers, these six pointers, it really starts to erode your overall rank. I think as the, as the season's going on. And I don't mean that'd be insulting because I don't think you're doing that. This I actually don't know that you've done that in recent seasons, but I remember a couple of years ago, I felt like that was like a, an approach that you would take sometimes. And I feel like that's like a, a, a trap that I've fallen into a little bit this season. I would describe it as passivity. So you're just being passive. And often when I am in that position and I am passive, I agree. Like it's when it goes poorly, it feels bad because you are not, you haven't act, you haven't been a part of it. Yeah. Yep. As I've said, yeah. like in seasons past, like FPL just starts happening to you and right. you're not, you're yeah, not, that's a good way to put it. You're not yeah. playing with it. Yep. And yep. FPL for, you know, there can be times where it's fun and you have bad luck, but you've, you've made a decision that you feel yeah. still can feel strongly yeah. about. And to yeah. have a lack of decision, you know, take some of that like um, ownership away yeah. from how you yeah, play I think, the game. I agree. I think that's right. Like not, not making that transfer to me felt passive and I'm, I'm pretty annoyed at myself and I don't think I'm being too like retroactive about it but like you know i i Semenyo versus sarabia was a 50 50 to me um yeah i you could certainly make an argument for starting sarabia and, and uh, obviously i wish i had uh but Semenyo, i was like well he scored a brace the last time they played luton like I, I thought i just kind of thought it would be another kind of open match like the last time they played each other and it really wasn't maybe it kind of was at the very end um right. watching that wolves match yeah. uh with you at smithfield hall on west 25th street great place to watch football if you're yeah. in midtown manhattan free plug but a good a, <laughs> we're a worthy plug because the people who work there are super nice it's yeah good, yeah it's fantastic spot, yeah. um but it was interesting to see you with sarabia on the bench when there was that disallowed var goal and close your ears uh wolves fans um at the end you Kind of where I could feel you hoping that the goal would be disallowed because it was a Sarabia <laughs> assist and you of wanted course. less regret and remorse in your life, which I can I understand. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So he, like his ownership was like at least eleven percent or something like that. There was there was there was like a practical you know benefit to it as well. But yeah, also that. But but my point is that to me is not something I'm going to spend um, a long time lamenting, right? Because that's a 50 50 That like that was just a decision. There was no like, there's nothing passive about that, right? Yeah. I just made a decision and I got yeah. it wrong. Like yeah. I can deal with that. It's Happens. the like, it's the, oh, let me, let me hold off and have more flexibility for the perfect transfers. That's the kind of stuff that I don't think I'm doing when I'm kind of like locked yeah. in, you know? So this actually plays into the transfers that I'm thinking about for game week 33 slash 34. So okay. I think we'll get into uh, the nitty gritty of that later in the pod. Uh, but the the major theme here, I think, is kind of like what's what's our sort of like uh, overall strategy for the six game weeks that are left. Yeah, I mean that's 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 a little bit of that. I mean, I think we're going to look ahead to um, to thirty three. I don't want to make the mistake of it just ignoring the game week in front of us. I, yeah. I think it happens especially when you got a big double. And 34. It's really honestly very hard though to talk about your transfers without thinking about 34, right? It's sort of looming there um, just, just a week away from us. And just as a reminder for anyone who's forgotten, uh, in 34, you have a bunch of teams that play twice. I believe it's uh Man City um to Brighton. You know, I, I've got to I gotta pull this up now. Sorry. So Man, Man City, Sheffield, uh Liverpool, Palace, and Bournemouth and Wolves, I believe, um, mm -hmm. as well as Arsenal. There you go. <laughs> Little no, old no. tin pot team, Arsenal. Yeah, Arsenal as well. Yeah. So I, I made I said that in about the most confusing way possible because I didn't have the exact. I was trying to do it just by like looking at the fixtures for thirty four, which is a. I got I got pretty close. Uh, but let me just let me just pull it up here and make sure I've got it exactly right. Right. So um, Arsenal, Bournemouth. Crystal Palace, Everton, I think I missed Everton, uh, Liverpool, Sheffield, and Wolves. Now, I know that you're tripled up on Sheffield, um, but otherwise Sheffield you're United. sort of... Yeah, Sheffield United, and, uh, but otherwise you have no double game week players so far. So you're in a you're pretty tricky. No, I'm just kidding. You have. Uh, you, <laughs> I think they look what, great, Josh, and I'm here, yeah. you, know, you know, buck the narrative, break the template. Yeah. So, um, I mean, do you want to talk any more about 32? I, I mean, you had, you had an okay week, right? How many points did you finish on? Sure, let me throw my team up on the screen. I finished on uh, 63 points, which I believe mm. is exactly the same as, as yours. Yes, uh, yeah. Yeah. 
So I did actually, let's... I didn't realize we finished in the same. I thought, um, uh, I, I thought, I thought you'd nicked me. So, uh, all right. Well, so piece. where, where I, I, maybe you thought that Saliba didn't get a yellow card. I, that was, that's probably the, the biggest complaint I have is, is my Arsenal defensive double up has been going very well with Saliba and Gabriel and Ben White owners and Saliba owners had to stomach the yellow cards late in that game. But still, uh, it it looks like maybe the Arsenal defensive double up, even you could throw Raya in there, is maybe the way to go for the double in 34 as opposed to trying to pick another Arsenal attacker out of a hat, be it Odegaard. And so you then that plays that, that's kind of like my thinking is Luis Diaz is looking as good and maybe has a slight fantasy edge on Odegaard in yeah. terms of uh, goal productivity. I mean, he's arguably the form player on that team, including Salah, right? Yes. So, yeah, I, I decided to go Salah captain, and it worked out just by the skin of my teeth. And, you know, he, I, he's not looked quite the same since he had that outrageous, like, record number of shots against Brighton, and it's just not coming together. I do still feel like Salah... You know, it's not like we'll never see top form Salah ever again, and he's always one game week away. And I'd say that more about Mo Salah than I would about Erling Holland, who feels like he's still maybe a couple more weeks away from uh, punishing fantasy. Yeah. You had an, you had an interesting comment on uh, Saturday morning when I when I saw you. I saw you. We we met up uh, after the uh, Man City. I guess as the Man City match was sort of coming to a close, maybe. Yeah, and uh, you were. You were saying, oh, I'm just I'm actually relieved that Holland scored uh, in that match. Uh, and I was thinking, well, you know, I'm not because like at least a handful of people captained him and he was over 100 percent owned, you know, when you include the captaincy. And uh, and you were like, yeah, but I, I need to find a way to justify having 14 million <laughs> yeah, <laughs> invested right. in this guy. <laughs> yeah. So and then s- similar thing with Salah, like he gets his points just by way of a uh, penalty. I mean, a clear pretty clear cut penalty. So all of our money is tied up in Mo and Erling Holland right now. And we're just not getting the returns that we'd expect. And, you know, I don't have Ollie Watkins because I've got money tied up in these guys. Uh, I, and I, I think maybe uh, another dark cloud here is Solanke and um, Frankie Muniz uh, at Fulham just continue to uh, dog, dog me. And we're going to yeah. talk about the, our on the beach index in a couple of minutes. And Bournemouth yeah. and Fulham are going to feature heavily, I suspect. So, <laughs> looking at my squad here, uh, I think the decision I have to make is how much longer do I want to hold Sun? Like, do I want to hold Sun for game week 33 away in Newcastle? And that feels like a really good fixture for Spurs, be, just the way Newcastle have been defending. Uh, but that is me being a passive manager and not going ahead and getting Darwin and Luis Diaz, uh, right. because I want, I want them for 34. The, uh, the other option would be, I'm just going to, uh, move Suchek to a make weight 4.1, 4.2 midfielder, which is the third part of that game week 34 move. So, right. uh, son is, is weirdly the biggest question mark I have right now. Yeah, uh, similar to me, honestly. Uh, Son, I would say, is is pr- almost definitely going to go this week. Um, sort of in a pretty similar spot to you. I mean, I, I think ultimately we're going to end up with kind of the same players, um, unfortunately, in our uh, 11. Because I'm, I you know, I'm a little, I, I think, I don't know. I mean, Ben White. Does Ben White start every single Premier League game the rest of the season? Or do we think that why, he might? Why wouldn't he? Tell I, me why. I don't know. Tomoyasu back uh he, he he surely he will though right i mean now that it's now that now that they have the title like uh in their um what we say they, in their control right i mean you're technically they're tied mm-hmm. with liverpool but it's a pretty significant goal difference right it's i mean like 14 um by the way i was looking at the table and it's honestly kind of hard not to see man city winning <laughs> Uh, yeah. because it's just like, they don't have a really difficult fixture to go. I mean, maybe phone away is the hardest fixture that they have left on the agenda. And I think Arsenal have to play 
away to Man United and away to Spurs still um, this season. Um, so I think, you know, in Liverpool, it's like, do we trust them enough to win every game down the stretch? So I know we're like making every fan base angry right now uh, with this conversation, but yeah, I'm just as a, <laughs> as a, as a kind of observer, it, it worries me a little bit. This, the Man United, yeah. the Liverpool draw today was like a kind of like, eh. Like, now, let, I mean, let, I, I'd love to see Arsenal win it. Like, I genuinely like that as the team I am genuinely rooting for. But like, I, I just it can't be Man City. That's really what's most important. To me. That would be ideal. Yeah. Well, let's go back to the Ben White thing. This, because yeah. I think this is a, a teachable moment for fantasy managers. You right. mentioned a few minutes ago about creating your own story in your head about how things are going to go. Sure. And you've got a great pick in Ben White. But for some reason, you feel compelled to create a story to talk yourself out of it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is. I guess it's the worry about it. I mean, it's just a lot. There are a lot of fixtures for these clubs over the next couple of weeks, right? Like yeah. uh, Arsenal, Arsenal, and Man City, especially, right? They have um, uh, the Champions League at midweek matches on the weekend, second leg of the Champions League. Um the following week matches at the weekend and then a midweek fixture after that. Right. So that'll be, it's five matches in um, whatever that is. Right. Five matches in 18 days, let's say, mm-hmm. um, you know, so it's, it's, it's quite a lot of fixtures. And so I, I could see them potentially, right. Um, doing some level of rotation there. And so it makes you, it just makes me wonder if I maybe want to go Saliba over white just for the, like, I, I think Saliba is extraordinarily unlikely that he would be, rotated at any point but yeah. maybe white if he's so like maybe you know honestly what would I, what would be ideal i don't know if it's going to happen uh would be for white not to um not to start the champions league which um in midweek i i you know the problem is it's 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 they're playing Bayern Munich in the Champions League yeah, quarterfinals, like in what right? World it's like does Ben White get, I know. Uh, rotated yeah. for that match. So maybe you just run it. You just run it out with these guys all the way to the end. I mean, Arteta is not a he, he more this season than previous seasons, but he's not heavy on rotation, right? Yeah. Um. So yeah, and and also I like I don't know why I'm being so like, I mean, I guess the concern is just you know I'm gonna miss out on a clean sheet, right? That I like. Uh, mm-hmm. That I'm I'm not going to have Saliba, and even though he has less stacking threat. Um, I'm going to miss out on a, on a clean sheet just because um, he starts one more match than white over the next, you know, couple of weeks. But so, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I understand. We don't need to get into the nitty gritty of like, why not Raya or anything like that, but this is not the Josh. I know where you're, you're typically going for the more um, I know. attacking so, move. I uh, hate it. I'm, I'm, I know this season has messed with my confidence a little bit <laughs> yeah. and I have to like, I need the summer to reset a little bit. We're, so, yeah. Yeah, so you, you've kind of put a few props here in the running order, which speaks to this. Um, yep. And if you want to share your team on the screen and, and look at your points here, game week for 32, that's yeah. cool. But also, I want, to pose, I want to pose a question to you of how aggressive do you feel like you want to be? Do you need yeah. to be? So I feel like maybe part of this is you had – you were feeling motivated by a series of green arrows that top 100 K was in yeah, just to put reach. the season behind you. And yep. maybe now you've said that's no longer achievable. So being aggressive is, is not your cup of tea here. It's not impossible, but I've put myself in a very difficult position, I would say. Um, and I think the last couple of weeks have taught us as well that, um, you know, we, we now it's confirmed by the way, um, that there's a double game week in 35 for, um, uh, for Chelsea and Spurs, but I, there we've increasingly, I'm slightly concerned about the idea of kind of going all in, um, on those two clubs, right. Despite them having two doubles, because I, I can't think of, of more like, you know, in theory, you can have six total players from those two squads. Right. And it's really hard to think of more than two total <laughs> that I'm like super excited about. Sure. You could talk yourself into Pedro Porro and, Maybe Connor Gallagher, like just to be a little different. I mean, Melo Gusto, if he's healthy, right? It's like you're sort of like literally you get above one player from each squad. James Madison's been in terrible form, right? It's like it's kind of hard to find um, these uh, fixtures even a for second Ch- option. Right. Yeah. And the fixtures for Chelsea and Spurs are not super appetizing. In that double and 35, Chelsea are away at Aston Villa and then they host Spurs. And then yeah. Spurs themselves host Arsenal and are away at Stamford Bridge. Um, I don't know. Maybe you give Spurs an edge against uh, Chelsea at the bridge, depending on yeah. you know if, if Spurs but, are able to find some form again. But it does feel yeah. like if Spurs are 
I mean, the Spurs are lucky that Aston Villa are sputtering the way the way yeah. they are, and it still but, kind of remains very interesting who's going to be in fourth and fifth. Though they might still yeah, get champions, and and a, and a nice win for them today too. Um, yeah. You know for sure. Um, I, I think you might be right though. You might be onto um, you might be onto something here, Brandon. Which is that mm. you know maybe I'm just not looking at these doubles in the most positive way, right? <laughs> like I, let's, let's dig around. I mean, first of all, we don't have to do it on this pod because there's, there's multiple game weeks in front of us, but you know, on, on this pod on 34, as we, as we look ahead to the next, even just the next couple of weeks, what are, what is a positive way to look at the transfers we could make, right? Like what is the more aggressive? And maybe that is like what I just want to, maybe I just want to go out feeling like I, I feel like, I like feel like I'm putting my best foot forward, right? Like, um, you know, missing missing a couple of uh, price changes that that forced my hand on the last couple of weeks. Missing a deadline in twenty nine, which I like have never done. I think in like ten years of playing fantasy, it's like you know, just like these 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 are like like focus problems, right? And I think that they're I think that they're fixable. Um, and so I think being kind of focused and and positive would be some goals for me. I don't know that I can really like mini leagues and stuff like that. Um, probably out of reach, but I think hundred K is still possible. I'm still going to shoot for it. And I, if I, if, if I finished even in the top 150, the top 200, um, I, I suppose I would see that as a, um, as a, mm-hmm. not a, if not necessarily a successful season, um, well, I, unless, I mean, just by like the standards that I set going into the season, right. I want to finish in the top 10 K this season. Right. Um, then, and, and anything kind of even top, even over the top hundred K at least. Right. And so, um, so for me personally, like I'm sort of missing those goals, right. But maybe I'm just being a little too, um, focused on the fact that I've missed those goals. Right. And it's yeah. sort of like, it's kind of easy to be like, well, screw all of this then, you know, and just like, I'm like, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going <laughs> to check out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm just going to check out until next year. Um, you know, it's not like I want to, you know, so it's like, I want to respect my, uh, respect myself a little bit with my approach. So anyway, um, I do, Brandon, uh, want to take a quick look at the table because when you and I were um, at the, we were, we were we were watching the games at the Smithfield Hall on Saturday. Um, I started to watch what I thought was a pretty. Uh, ultimately, they they kind of well they ended up losing, so maybe I, my first impression was right. They did they did get they did draw first blood, but they <laughs> they lost in the end, uh, which was um, Bournemouth. And I was like, man, are Bournemouth like a little? Are things getting a little beachy for Bournemouth? Are we are we looking at an on the beach mm-hmm. team here? And um, so you know, I just thought we should we should introduce a new weekly series here, Brandon, where you and I just take a quick look and decide whether we were whether we're adding anybody new to our on the beach rankings. Okay, sure. so and on the beach for anyone who doesn't know, basically is a I, you don't really get it in American sports, as far as I know. I think it's a more it's a distinctly English thing, maybe, maybe because, um, they, you know, you, you have to leave the country to go to a beach. I guess you can go to Brighton, right. Or, or maybe you can go to, um, you like, don't what, go to Blackpool beaches in England though, where you're, where summer. you put on your, your swim trucks and, and your, and your flip flops. No, uh, we're thinking like a, these are, these are footballers, tropical. right? So we're, we're thinking, yeah, Ibiza, right? Like stuff like that. Right. So, uh, so when you're on the beach, it basically means, uh, and I suppose that one of the reasons why, like one of the, I'm not gonna like explain this origin for much longer here, but like, I think part of it is like, it, it, when you have promotion relegation, there are always kind of two tables for you or two ways to look at the table, right? Like one is, can I win the league? Can I get in Europe? Right. Or can I get relegated? Right. That's the kind of other side of the table. And if you get down into the 30s, which is where we are now, right? We only have six weeks left in the season. There are some clubs that will not be getting like advancing <laughs> um, into Europe and they will not be getting relegated. It's just kind of like a, a stone fact. And uh, and those teams are the ones that we sort of consider to be on the beach. And um, it doesn't it, you know, there are teams in that kind of middle tier sometimes like a team, it's almost like they're playing for next season a little bit. Like I feel like wolves have had some of this, right. Where they've put together some, some good performances. Like you can kind of see like, like a, like an identity forming there. Right. Uh, but other teams, they just get like a little fried, right. A little exhausted. And I think crystal palace are the, the like the ultimate version of this for what, what feels like year in and year out. Now it's like every year, somehow, <laughs> Somehow they like mm-hmm. lose out. It's like they like lose like the last like 10, 12 matches. It feels like they never win a match down the stretch, but somehow they've always accumulated enough 
wins that they're never at risk and it's like do you remember all of these palace wins it's like every, every season it's like there is no doubt that palace will be fine and yet i can remember like three times all year when they won a match it's it's a very the palace conundrum brandon is really interesting to sure me. they they started strong and i think what they're suffering from now is the same thing they've been suffering from for seasons is they have no real identity on the mm -hmm. pitch because management keeps turning over and sure. you know you thought that they were going to get that with patrick Vieira, and ultimately he just couldn't keep that they flywheel spinning yeah they still have really great players though and as a and um just just to name one uh the obvious one olisa as well um and and some makings of a decent defense so i do think that they're number one on the beach just because they have this I don't. I couldn't even tell you the name of the manager at Crystal Palace right now. That's how like little a story it's been. Uh, Oliver Glasner, uh, you know, wow. who who he's he's uh, he's Austrian. Okay, there's your little okay. bio on on wow. Oliver Glasner. Wow. I don't think anything's been made of him, and I think Crystal Palace just it's quite struggled. a biographical sketch that you. That you drew yeah. for me there. I'm sure a lot of sketch artists could probably draw his face based on how I <laughs> how I described him just there. Um, but I like some teams who are mired in mid table. I agree with you. Like the biggest problem is they just get fried because it is such a long season. Yeah, there are clubs who would push to like I would much rather be in tenth place than thirteenth place because I get a bigger bag at the end of the season. Like there's money involved no matter where you finish at the table. There's also yeah. pride involved, professionalism involved. There's no yep. tanking like you see in American sports like uh, to get a better draft pick or something like that. And then I, I, like Muni's has been such a fantastic story at this part of the season because he really couldn't get a look at Fulham for the last, you know, since he basically came in two years ago. And now he's hit the form of his life. And now he's motivated to keep that number nine shirt for next season and to say, yeah. look, boss, like don't go yeah. shopping for another striker this summer. Yeah, so you're I get kind it. of exactly. interested in those stories. But Crystal Palace, it's kind of like I, I would venture like a lot of these players are probably looking for a way out of yeah. this club as opposed yeah. to a way to stay there. Yeah. And the reason that we're talking about this uh fantasy wise is that it's a it's a pretty useful uh, uh kind of I don't know, like uh, it's a useful idea to keep in your head when it comes to making transfers, right? Is like, are, are, am I brought, am I about to bring in a player from a team that really has nothing to play for uh, and no yeah. reason to play me 180 minutes every match and I don't have a huge motivation either? Um, I mean, you know, every now and then you get the like kind of goal crazy guys where it kind of doesn't matter because they're just like they're obsessed with scoring or you know, maybe they have goal bonuses in their contract or something like that. But um, I think in general, it's, like, you know, Palace is a team where I, I have been sort of circling around like, ah, oh, maybe as a in 34, um, you know, even this this Bournemouth defense or, you know, attacking double up that I have right now. I'm like, do I need to blow this up ahead of ahead of 34 now, too? Like, do I just need to get Darwin myself? Right. Just like, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, 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 it's, and it's just because and I, you know, maybe it's a little unfair to even lump Bournemouth in here because they, they have won three in a row before this um, for the Luton uh, loss. And even that one was kind of a late. A late loss but uh, i think yeah i think palace are there i think fulham by and large are there um everton it's actually i i would say that the the rankings are actually pretty tight all things considered right i think um mm -hmm. or i mean the, you know the table i should say it's like i i'd say from 15th 14th 15th spot on down there's still enough risk right like i think everton are approaching safety but i don't think they can feel fully safe yet right i think they've got a yeah. No they need way. a couple couple more wins. We're only at twenty nine points on the season. Yeah, same for them. And and it, you, uh, some sort of like less math based ones, just kind of hunch based ones, is what's going on at Brentford. Brentford are in danger of getting dragged into a relegation scrap. Yeah, but I'm not seeing. You know, Ivan Tony. Surely he gets sold this summer, given he's got one year left on his contract. Like who at yeah. Brentford is motivated to uh keep this thing going apart from thomas frank and then you go above wolves brighton i don't know i get the sixth sense josh that those brighton players are sick of the sight of roberto de Zerbi. yeah uh yeah. like at this point everyone's got to be asking questions like what what's this guy 
up to. Then yeah. Chelsea, uh, same, total same. mess. Don't. I mean, I, I don't think anyone's blaming Potch still. Like, and I, I don't think they should. But yeah, I mean, drawing drawing away to Sheffield, that's a that's a tough one. Yeah, I wonder about Pochettino. Like, you kind of have to put him in the same conversation as Ten Hag, where okay, Ten Hag's players maybe aren't up to scratch for what Manchester United fans would would want. But you got to at least create some organization on the pitch, and you can't have the opposing team just driving through you mercilessly. Um, okay, so, so for this week, Brandon, uh-huh. just to I'll cut you off there. <laughs> yeah, for this week, we can talk about all these. Are all these teams on the beach? I, I think, I think we should do this slowly. And I think for this okay. week, we'll add two teams to the on the beach rankings. Maybe it'll be two a week. Maybe we'll add more as Great. we go. Great. But I think Brighton and Bournemouth. No, no, actually, I'll keep Bournemouth for now. Brighton Palace. Brighton Palace are yep. officially on the beach and probably to be avoided for the rest of the season. Agreed. Mark it. We'll okay, see you next season, it. guys. It's done. All right, great. All right, so let's let's move on here, Brandon. Uh, I want to talk about Game Week 33 uh, and, and 34 a little bit. Uh, I do want to quickly say thank you to everyone who supports the podcast on Patreon. If you have enjoyed the podcast this season, if it's been helpful, uh, if we've helped you win the league, or if it's just been fun, fun thing to listen to on your morning commute or in your drive to work or whatever on the, the treadmill, uh, and you want to say thank you, you can go to patreon.com slash always cheating. And a huge thank you to everyone uh, who, who currently supports us. Uh, several hundred, more than 500 people, Brandon, uh, Mm -hmm. support the podcast. And so I also wanted to say a quick thank you to some new patrons, Brandon. Tim W., Jared Simon Pete, James Murray Wood, and Rafi Karigian. So thank you to our newest Patreon supporters. Uh, If you join the pod and become a Patreon supporter, we do a a little personalized thank you for you on the pod. And uh, just a note, uh, this June when we're off, uh, we take our little end of season break. Uh, we do not charge our Patreon supporters. So that's a it's a free month for everybody. You, can, you still get access to the Discord during that month. Uh, you also get an extra podcast that we do each week, usually Thursday evenings. Uh, and also a quick update on the Always Cheating Super League, Brandon. No Monday yeah. match this week, although there is next week. So good opportunity for us to read off the Super League top 10. Uh, in 10th is Lenny Peoples. Great name. Wow. I wish your name was Lenny Peoples. <laughs> great. Well, maybe Lenny is Josh, a great podcaster. Like, get Josh, Josh, yeah. Josh Landon and Lenny Peoples. I mean, oh, man, I got to find him and uh, <laughs> replace you. Uh, in ninth is uh, Roy Roy Gordon. Uh, in eighth is Peter Stead. Seventh is Peter Hafsmo Uh In sixth is Lauren Pust. It's interesting. Like, we're really starting to see a lot of uh, recurring names, aren't we, yeah. in the top 10? It's, it's pretty People unstable. Until digging in, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, in uh, fifth is uh, Garfield creator Jim Davis. Uh, wow. In fourth is Chris McMenamin. Uh, in third is Jake Holton. In second is Christian Larich. Uh, and in first is Ben Houghton. So you have a Holton, that's H O L T O N, and a Houghton, H O H O U G H T O N, uh, all inside the um, top 10, Brandon. This this is crazy. I have two special uh, shout outs before we move on with the show. I did want to thank our friend Andrew Davis, who wrote an email to us uh, talking about how one can make fantasy fun again. You feel like your personal mini league with your friends has gotten too template. Well, Andrew and his pals agreed no one is going to own Sala or Holland for the entire season. And uh, he was saying I breathed new life into his mini league. I thought that was a really cool story. Thanks for sharing that, Andrew. And yeah. also... For all of our Canadian Toronto-based cheaters, there's going to be the first ever. F- Can there possibly be another FPL meetup that's occurred in the country of Canada, let alone Toronto? Well, it's happening next Saturday, April 13th yep. at Scotland Yard. I'm going to be there. That's located at 56th the Esplanade, kind of on the east side of Toronto. I'm just kind of getting my feet wet with the football bars here. But if you're in the greater Toronto area, please swing by. On Saturday, April 13th, I'm going to get there around 9 a.m. It is a Spurs bar, so I have a hunch they'll be open for the 7.30 a.m. kickoff. But it's nothing formal. Yep. Just look for me. I don't think it's a big secret what I look like. So hope to see you there and have a beer. That's great. Yeah, and I know some people have reached out on, on DM and, and other places um, to say that they're uh, interested in coming or at least that they are they, they are in Toronto, if nothing else, Brian. So hopefully, uh, awesome. Awesome. yeah. So yeah, hopefully um, it'll be fun. Uh, it's, it's a nice meetup. Yeah. Take some pictures. I want to see what the inside of the other Scotland yard looks like. Brandon. Yeah. Oh yeah. We'll yeah. be solving crimes while watching football. You can count on that. <laughs> 
All right, well, we've got uh, Game Week 33 kicks off on Saturday. I, yeah, are we, are we going to get more Friday matches this season? I loved a Friday match, Brandon. I love a. I know. You really... need an, an excuse to sort of knock off the old oh. work email uh, in the afternoon no. here in the States. It's interesting. Uh, I'm going to be in Rome uh, in a couple of weeks' time, Brandon. That's in my kids' uh, yeah. spring break. And uh, that actually is during Game Week 34. So I'm going to have the rare. Uh, opportunity because uh, honestly I don't know about you but we usually crash pretty late when we're doing uh with you know when when you're on the town in a foreign country you know it's like you I, I never go to bed earlier than I do when I'm on vacation it's always like you would think it'd be the other way around but I'm yeah. like by 9 p.m usually I'm fried so uh I'm gonna have a chance to hopefully watch some of these matches in real time I don't know if I'm gonna have to legally stream them or what but I also found out that uh our friend of the podcast Joe uh Joe Lepper was just in Rome himself so no why kidding. How are these, you know, how why are these that? FPL managers going to Rome all of a sudden? Let's I mean, you're looking missions. for inspiration, right? I assume you're going to the Colosseum and to look at where yes. all the great gladiators used to perform. Yeah. This is the mentality that you need yeah. going into the final going game. One, one higher, Brandon. I'm going, I'm going to the Vatican. Okay. Real inspiration. I'm going to take an audience <laughs> with, with Pope Francis, see if he can help me out, uh, figure, figure this season out. Like what, what went wrong? Yeah, we need more gold leaf on this podcast is, <laughs> is what I've decided. Awesome. Are you planning to go to any live matches, seeing some Syria Ma- while you're there? Maybe, uh, okay. there are Lazio play. That's the only one, uh, Roma, Roma don't have any home matches that week, sadly. Um, and Ra- Lazio, I'm like a little more intimidated by, I'm like, uh, do I want to bring the whole family? Uh, cause I've, I've heard it's a little yeah. more intense, the Lazio, yeah. um, you know, crowd, yeah. but maybe I'm being, yeah. uh, judgmental. I don't really know. There's like it's a class it's like there. the center of the ultra universe, uh, Syria is my understanding too. So yeah, you sort of ask questions before. Yeah, exactly. Before I, you bring a kid there for a eight, yeah. 8 right. PM evening match or something like that. <laughs> so, uh, so we'll see, I hope to, but, uh, if not, we're, yeah, we're going to Florence, uh, but just for one day. So, because it'd be, it'd be fun to see uh Fiorentina play as well. Cause they have the, uh, yeah. I love those purple kits, you know, those purple, the purple, uh, very Florence. iconic, right? Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. All right. So anyway, gaming 33 kicks off on Saturday. Uh, you'll be at Scotland yard. Uh, I will be, um, have my couch um but we have uh, a nice nice run of matches this weekend i think um i would say we don't have any like standout um i'm just looking big picture before we dig into some of the fpl questions but i wouldn't say there are any um it's actually a, i think it's a good match for a good weekend for fpl less of a good match from a kind of competitive standpoint i mean newcastle spurs should be interesting i mean newcastle what a weird season right where they they keep having these kind of whatever performances but then i mean they've got two wins in a row now right like a kind of you know reasonably impressive away win um at, at fulham um I, honestly you know they scored twice uh, one of them got chalked off right but um mm-hmm. you know they're pretty pretty in control in that match and uh but then you know spurs are they can kind of beat or lose to anybody right and so i think that uh, the first match of the weekend may actually be the most fun for me like just pure like a pure watch standpoint yeah, totally. I, funny, I just got kicked out of the fantasy site. I love it. It's, it's like being on a VPN at work when it just decides <laughs> to totally lock you off. Yeah. Yeah, um, I agree. Like, I feel like we've had some big marquee matchups like City, Arsenal, and then um, Liverpool, Man United this game week recently. And it's nice to see some kind of like... These, are, these feel like more just like fixtures made for fantasy managers. <laughs> Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what do you think about, um, okay, let's start things off with the captaincy. Uh, okay. is there an argument for a non Holland captain choice? Man city hosts Luton on Saturday. However, right. This is the important thing. Um, so this is, I, I sort of make a point before I, before I, uh, you respond here, uh, yeah. which is, uh, the, the key question to me for game week 33 is how much the midweek fixtures that we have this week, five Premier League clubs play in Europe this week, uh, how much they're going to affect game week 33. And I think what's interesting about it is because of where we are at the table right now, you can make an argument that it's the 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 Europa League and Europa Conference League squads that are actually a little more a little more at risk maybe of, of some rest and rotation um, over the weekend than uh, Arsenal and Man City who really can't maybe afford to do that. Um, but still, uh, Man City play um, on Tuesday and then uh, the, then again on Saturday and then they play the second leg of their Champions League match um, following Wednesday. So um, 
you know, I, do you think that there's any risk of Holland maybe not starting this match? I mean, Pep has already shown in the last mm-hmm. week, right, that he's mm-hmm. he's happy to not play Holland for 90, um, he, that he's happy not to play Foden for 90. Um, it's, it's sort of, you know, it's yeah. incredible luxury to be rotating these incredible players. But, um, you know, so I guess, sorry, to just re- restate my question, is Holland the runaway captain pick for Game Week 33? I don't think so. I think Liverpool, we just talked about chief on the beach team is Crystal Palace and add on that going to Anfield, add on that Liverpool. I mean, they, they do have the Thursday match, but I think Klopp is far more likely to rotate in Europe just um, oh, sure. Given, given the 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 standard Liverpool focus on the on the Premier yeah. League, yep. So the problem is, uh, Salah is kind of in this weird moment in his form. Where there's a lack of confidence in captaining Salah, but I think you say the same thing about about Holland. What's going on with his form? And I, I agree with you. Like the Arsenal and City playing on Tuesday, it's almost. They, they Tuesday matches in Europe to me feel like there's like it creates the least amount of risk that there's going to yeah. be any rest and rotation the following weekend. Yeah. Now, yeah. if City go and lay an egg in Madrid and they are then looking at like overturning a one, two, three goal deficit yeah. in the return leg, then maybe Pep uh, has to do some rotation. But because surely, surely yeah. Luton, like they. Surely he can field Julian Alvarez and you know Bernardo Silver, whatever, whatever his like yeah. second string is, and and still win fairly, still feel very confident of a victory, right? I mean, even though Luton are, are dangerous, certainly, but like that's that's not a match where even Luton is going to go in thinking, oh yeah, we're going to get three points from this. But Holland's not a player that needs rest. He doesn't actually run a whole lot. Um, yeah. He hasn't been able to run because nobody no passer on man city has broken him free like in months so yeah. the number of sprints that he's done i i couldn't That's even true. say and, and he was just rested got, yeah and julian alvarez is not in any great form himself so i don't see a lot of competition there so yeah i think holland is a very safe captaincy in my opinion a safe captaincy against luton and a safe start uh and Arsenal, I guess you kind of put them in the same boat in terms of I don't have a great fear of rotation, but I do have a a small amount of fear about this Aston Villa fixture. I could see Emery kind of tactically trying to shut up shop there Mm -hmm. and um, Arsenal do have some vulnerability in terms of like if if a team figures out like the middle block, the middle to low block, then they can struggle to score those three, four, five, six goals that sometimes they can. So I think that might be a somewhat low scoring match, even though I think we'll see a full strength squad from uh, Arteta. Yeah, I know it's and, and Villa are an interesting, uh, interesting position because um, in theory, you would expect them to prioritize um, Europe, but they, they obviously can't because they are tied with with Spurs right now on goal difference, right? They're, uh, Spurs are actually ahead of them by three goals uh, at the moment, 20 to 17. So um, there, there's no, yeah, I mean, yeah, if anything, you're right. I mean, they, that could be an opportunity for them to kind of try to nil-nil their way to a point or something like that, right? Like try to like yeah. make it as kind of low scoring as possible. I guess it wouldn't be like the fact that uh, there's probably going to be five with the coefficient, five Premier League clubs who get into the Champions League. Maybe that takes a little bit of the pressure off. Uh, but still, that I right. think that reinforces your idea right. that playing for a draw maybe is like the be- what's best suited. You're going to be Villa will be tired from the Thursday night Europe fixture. Yeah. Maybe a point will be fine for them. Why just go out and risk yeah. getting destroyed is that, is that a, by Arsenal. Is that a lock though? I mean 5 5 for next season for the for, for England. That's not it's not a lock, is it? No, I think it is because the England teams are making it so far now in the Europa and Europa Conference League. But I don't technically I don't know what has to be locked into place to make that happen, but all the pundits okay. seem to think that it's it's likely at this point. Okay. Yeah. But certainly you can't play that way. Right. Don't and, want to play um, with fire. No, that's yeah. a lot of money. It's, it's a lot of money on the table. 
It's a lot of money. It'd be very cool to see uh, Villa in the Champions League next year, obviously, too. Um, and they're, they're, it's amazing. I mean, they're still, they're 11 clear of Man United um, in, in sixth place. It's really remarkable how well they've, they've consistently done this season, even on honestly a pretty tough spell, right? I mean, they've only picked up five points from 15 uh, in the last five. Yeah. I love having this form table up here, Brandon, that I'm looking at as we're talking. I should do this more often. It's a great, uh, <laughs> gives me a great sense of, of, you know, the kind of how, how, how te- sure. I mean, it's, it's, it's it, there's nothing fancy about it, but I would just sort of look and you're like, oh my gosh, right? Like three losses I mean, do, in five. Do you remember early in the season when people were like Villa title contenders? Like they were just yeah. not losing matches yeah. and they beat the crap out of Man City earlier in the season. And yeah, they have kind of come back down to earth. But I uh, I think it would be very fair for them yeah. to take fifth place into the Champions well, it's League. Interesting the way they've all kind of beaten each other up a little bit this yeah. season, right? Yeah. I mean, Arsenal are top of the table with four losses. Um, they're only on 71 points on the season. Um, so with what seven matches left, if they won, even if they won all 21 points, right. Um, that would still get, get them to 92. That's, that's significantly less than some other, like than like Liverpool and, and Man City's recent, like kind of top, top clubs. And I think that's a good thing. Like, I, I don't think that means like, you know, I, I think parody yeah. is, is amazing. Like that it's, it's, I love that we're talking about the table this late in the season, right. Yeah. Even on a fantasy podcast. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, in West Ham or another one where, um, you know, I mean, it would just be kind of amazing for them to go Europa conference league to Europa league to champions, champions league, league, like league that winners with insane. under David Moyes next season. <laughs> it's going to happen. Story. So of all the clubs, I would say they're the ones most likely to, to take the, the Europa league seriously as, as they should, I think. Well, um, but there's, you know, there's yeah. a wrinkle there and I looking at the Europe fixtures, West Ham are playing Bayer Lever- Leverkusen on Thursday, hey, a team who yeah. has famously not lost a single match under right. uh, Xavi Alonso this season, which I do not give uh, uh, to use um, to to use a second captainism. I do not give West Ham a rat's chance of beating. I don't know Bayer though. Leverkusen. Europa League is funky though. Like there, some of those Thursday matches, it's like the best team doesn't always win those right it's like a, it's a weird I, I don't know and 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 Leverkusen may just be like firmly like thinking about the the um you know the Bundesliga, the Bundesliga. Right. I mean there's yeah. 16 points clear of Bayern right now which is yeah. just like ridiculous I know they, so that's that, I mean they might they be on the beach as soon as next weekend yeah they, maybe they're on the beach yeah exactly but I mean it's not like they need to win the year I mean it'd be nice to win it'd be like a cool feather in the cap yeah. but they're they're in the Champions League yeah. no matter what next season yeah for so sure. um yeah, so I think that I think that'll be interesting. I guess, yeah, when you kind of break it down, it's it's interesting how maybe the the European stuff actually doesn't change things too much. Um, uh, you know, for the for the for the weekend, we sort of got one by one. I mean, West Ham, I think, is still the one, right? Unless I don't know if they if they you know if they go to nine nil to buy <laughs> to Leverkusen. Okay, sure, but like otherwise, if it's like a two one, they're down or one nil right something like that um i think that i could see them field in a pretty weakened squad for that home match versus fulham in order to prioritize the europe mm-hmm. the next week that's all i'm saying yeah 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 fair fair enough i mean it's kind of annoying that you're uh, well it, it's not annoying because it's not like our decisions before europe coming back this week uh, were easy uh, so no, it's just like it's, it's, I don't need another layer of difficulty. It's, yeah, man. exactly. <laughs> We're just introducing more uh, concerns for people to to ponder, you know, as, <laughs> as they go. Um, all right. So just looking, we have a, I think we've got five questions that I pulled for this pod. But before we do that, mm-hmm. um, you know, what are your current thoughts? Can you can I, can I take a look at your team, Brandon? Can I uh, can I see what you're well? You you, you're you, you do that. I have to have do my dual factor authentication one. <laughs> Because the because as I said the the site uh, logged me out. Here okay. we go. Should I read out loud what my what my numbers are while I'm doing this? No, no. Okay. I'll I'll yeah. That's a, a tempting, but uh, yeah. I'll pull I'll pull mine up here. Um, yeah. I think that it's um I, I think it's an interesting week, and I I will say. I so Dubrovka, I didn't even talk about this, but he's been such a disappointment for me. But his nine points were a real. Um, I, I ended up on a very small green arrow this week, and it was almost entirely down to his nine points uh, in that match. Um, I have two transfers, and I have a pretty obvious uh, transfer to make, um, which is um, the stupid on out. And like, yeah, I know that they're playing Burnley, but um, they're going to Burnley are going to score two on. I mean, Brighton cannot keep a clean sheet 
uh, or maybe they, I mean, it's like, you never know with them anymore. Somehow they kept a clean sheet away to Brentford a couple weeks ago. I don't know how they yeah. did that. Um, or a couple days ago. Right. It was in yeah. 30, 31. Um, but I don't try and he, I, and he didn't play a minute in that match in the cup of clean sheet. So <laughs> there's the secret. So there's the secret. Exactly. And he's just the, 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 astu- I mean, first of all, he just shouldn't be in my team at all. Right. And, um, yeah. uh, I have had many chances to drop and haven't done it. So I have two transfers and, uh, I'm looking forward to starting Sarabia. I think that'll be, I mm-hmm. wish I'd, st- I mean, he looks so good in these matches, yeah. doesn't he? Like he's a really wonderful player. And, uh, so it'd be fun to have him. Uh, who do we he say looks he so looks so good. Like? We decided he looked like Andrew Scott from, he does look uh, like Andrew Scott, the hits show, uh, Sherlock. Sherlock. Yeah. And, uh, Fleabag season two. Yeah. Um, yeah. So starting Sarabia for sure. And I think the the moves for me are actually pretty easy this week. Uh, I mean, I don't love dropping son either, but he doesn't play in 34. Right. And so it's, it's not that much of a loss anyway. And so son to Diaz and a stupid on to Ben white would be the moves that I'm most strongly considering. And that would get yeah. me to three Arsenal and three Liverpool, uh, which I think is the most important thing to have for game week 34. Um, and otherwise I'd be kind of rolling with a, a team that I think otherwise looks pretty good. Um, Holland captain, um, I, you know, I think Salo ultimately, I'm just going to literally end real time in the pod, make Salo my vice captain. Uh, Solanke, uh, you know, huge disappointment as we all know in the last few weeks. Um, does he actually turn into Nicholas Jackson in 35? I don't want to think about that, Brandon. Oh, it might, he, it, Nicholas it, Jackson it, has looked horrible the last <laughs> yeah, few weeks. They're all, maybe I'll just field two forwards. I don't know. Like, I never want to do it, but maybe now is the, I'll just keep Semenyo there for 4.5 million. So yeah, Nicholas, uh, this, yeah, mm-hmm, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, well, I was just going to say further on Nicholas Jackson, that in the, something that does not need to be said at all. Um, he is still a player that could just miraculously pop off with something in yeah, a double. That, so, that would be uh, the like, find a positive way to look at yeah. 35 that we're talking about yeah. before. So, he but gets if I make, minutes. Yeah, he gets minutes. So if I make those two moves, that'll give me 10 players playing in home matches in, uh, in 30 two which or, you know 33 excuse me which you know it's like it sounds great on paper let's let's go for it you know it's, it feels like a feels like a good positive way to approach yeah. um to approach it so that's that's where i'm leaning um i don't know any thoughts questions concerns no i yeah i'm kind of curious i'm goalkeeper curious right now for my own team i, I just can't imagine uh you making a goalkeeper transfer there i agree with you sarabia is i saw a sarabia on a ton of benches uh in game week 32 so it was just, that was just more interesting to see how big the sarabia bandwagon has gotten and yeah. i agree yeah, it'd be fun to finally get so, to break yeah. him out and play with them like i know and we, and we probably haven't like pitched him enough on this pod i mean you know he's just he's he's 4.7 million maybe he's I mean, I, probably actually gone up a little bit since then uh but you know he's he's is he still yeah he's still he's still at 4.7 which is kind of outrageous mm-hmm. uh 4.7 4. million has been getting um starters minutes uh playing on i think typically on the right flank and um you know he's on pens uh he's i mean again this is partially because of some injuries you know across the squad but um should be pretty safe even if even if uh huang makes it back into the squad Huang, yeah. you know typically plays on the left so uh, or as a for, or as the forward so um i think that sarabia should be should be pretty safe he's cheap and he plays twice in 34 so even if there's some long-term risk if you're um he's cheap enough that if you you know if you don't have a wild card left you could just bench him and if you do have a wild card left then all you have to do is get through the next three weeks of them right, right. and so i think there's a lot of arguments uh, in his favor yeah, I agree. I like your team for game week 33. Like with those moves, you're set there. So, so that's the game week in front of us. Just looking again ahead to game week 34, what's the, what's the one free transfer you're looking to make there? I'm noticing yeah. an absence of additional, or, or I'm noticing an absence of Darwin here, who is maybe yeah. a player we don't we well, don't want to talk about. Well, I mean, no, I mean, I'd love to have them, uh, but will you I have think, enough money uh, with these moves that you're planning to make? What? what well, money the thing will is, no. If I, if I turn, well, if I, no, if I turn Son into Diaz, then I then I wouldn't be able to do. Uh, you'd have already have three Liverpool because you have Ex- Virgil, right? Exactly. So I'd be I'd be prioritizing okay. Diaz over over Darwin, um, and that would leave me one transfer. What I would most likely do, uh, assuming that Holland doesn't get injured or that I don't just decide to go without Holland, um, would be to move um, for a double game week keeper. And okay. that yep. would probably be Jordan. See, I knew Pickford. it was going to come up the goalkeepers. Yep. Yep. So uh, I think Pickford 
is the one that I'm sort of leaning for because again, for 34, I'm planning to wild card in 35 as I believe you are as well. Yes. So, um, so I'm only really only looking for the best keeper for one specific week. If you know, like in your case, are you considering a goalkeeper for 33 as well? Like a possible goalkeeper move? No, I'm not. Uh, but so I, I can uh, talk you through my plans, which th- it's basically Did you get your like two factor working. Yeah, I'm good. I, I, I've got okay, I'm, right, I'm ready. I'm finally ready. I'm finally okay. ready. <laughs> good. I want to see it. <laughs> yeah. Now, thank you for your patience, everybody. OK, so the planned moves are uh, either like you sun out for Luis Diaz and then Botman. Like, look at my defense. I've got Kabore who can't play against his parent club. Uh, whatever it's man city you'd never start him and then botman who's out yeah. for the rest of the season did you know that i think i forgot that man city was his parent club by the way i mean well you're not keeping up on uh you know, <laughs> I, you know more about uh crystal palace's manager now than you do about East yeah Kibora. i feel like there's like a, one or two times a season where this happens though where someone's like ineligible to play and i'm like uh-huh. really <laughs> i'm like yeah. he's on loan from that club so here's here's the conundrum, and it and it does come down to Sun, and I th- and it, and I think the answer is pretty apparent. But if the desire is strong enough to keep Sun for Newcastle, and I think it'd have to be pretty strong because I have no plans to captain him. Yeah. Uh, then I would turn Thomas Suchek into some really cheap guy like McAtee, who would then give me the money I need in the bank to turn Muniz into Darwin ahead of game week thirty four. So that would be, I think, what we were discussing at the start of the pod, the very passive way to go about this. I Mm -hmm. think that I owe Sun one more week or whatever. Therefore, I'm going to leave two really strong Liverpool attackers on the wayside and wait for that double move in game week 34. The right thing to do, I think, is pretty clear. It's Muniz and Sun out to bring in Diaz and Darwin. And then I've got my full my full load of Liverpool coverage for 34 and um and and then I just have to actually is the problem with that is that I actually would have to do a triple move because I don't have exact enough uh, money without also doing this Thomas Suchek move. So okay, I think the 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 lens to think about that because there had to be a lot of people who are in the same position is if you were going to make a minus four at some point yeah. anyway before thirty four, then it's like you could just move it up a week, right? Yeah, let's 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 try this. Okay, so if I if I drop Muniz and Son, and I'm gonna bring in uh, Luis Diaz. Look at him; he's rising through the ranks. Mm-hmm. And Darwin, uh, who's also there, and I am points. I'm, I'm well short, so I'm looking at a minus four to do that. So, I mean, so, how much is Suchek? Suchek is four point nine. Four nine. So is there a I, four? Is there a four three midfielder in the game? Oh, plenty. Yeah, there are like plenty of four twos. Um, oh, well, uh, yeah. yeah, so that would be a minus four. But yeah, the very conservative passive route would be just do the Suchek move and take two free transfers into the game week 34 deadline. Uh, this is uh, like I I feel like I have to be proactive here. You know where we are with our ranks. The idea is to be aggressive. Yeah. Now that the fear is in the back of your mind that ah, son, decent fixture uh, at Newcastle, could he punish me? And I, I mean, I, I think the risk is lower there than yeah. uh, uh, the opportunity. And to his ownership is, guys. yeah, and his ownership is going to keep getting lower and stuff. Yeah, I mean, it looks like you could you could bring in uh, Newcastle's Anderson, who's been getting minutes in like every match. Um, and he's 4.2. So um, then you get at least have a tiny bit of coverage. Yeah. Just in case, I think you know? McAtee is kind of like a uh, a roll of the dice I'd be willing to take just because Sheffield United yeah. do double in 34. Yeah. I would bench uh, him. But he's, he's, I wouldn't he's four, play him. He's 4.4, my friend. Uh, I think he, something, I think I think changed. he's dropping. I think he's dropping tonight. Uh, oh, wow. We'll see. We'll watch. That's I mean, this is like <laughs> so. So this entire entire plan too does hinge on the prices not fluctuating too much, which <laughs> then is brings incredible. me to I mean, the people, goalkeeper thing. No, Brennan, I have to I have to stop you for a second because yeah. there it's incredible, right? There are people like the guy next to me who who sat down just to watch Everton play. Uh, you know, uh, mm-hmm. and just at the bar on Saturday, and just he was, he was an Everton supporter. He's an American guy. They're cheering and uh, had a good time. And then there are people like me and you who have 
who are talking at 10 o'clock at night about elaborate plans that involve uh-huh. McAtee uh-huh. dropping in place, you know, <laughs> yeah. in, in place. Yeah. I don't know where that place. came from. In, in place. Yeah. He's, he's dropping in place into my team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's what's exactly. happening there. It's all dropping into place. Yeah. But Leno uh, to another goalkeeper, a doubler um, would also get me. Like I just had to take another hit to yeah. get another doubler. So that's some a minus eight over the next two weeks is also something I'm strongly considering. Hmm. I think part of, part of the passivity too comes with uh, you start talking through all this and you're just kind of like, this is nonsense. Like, can mm-hmm. I just pl- roll with the team that I have going into this? Then I'm like, I think this team looks fine. Um, yeah. So, probably, so you probably can then, honestly, or you could just make one move, right? I mean, you could, yeah. you could, you could. Right. The problem, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the problem is. Move. Yeah, I mean the, the problem is it, it'd be nice to have a better defender, right? Because yeah. um, if you, if you're starting, you're, it's either Pau Torres away to Arsenal or nobody, yeah. right? Uh, but the problem is you can't get a better defender without making two moves, Spending right? More money so, or, that's, I mean, yes. that's, you're honestly in a very similar position to me, and that's that's ultimately why Son has to go. Uh, even though I love Son and I think he's mm-hmm. great, but I just I, I need two good players as opposed to his one very good yeah. player. <laughs> like I yeah. need to, I need to, I, I need, you know, it, it's just, it's more valuable for me to have those two spots um, yeah. improved. So I think I punt on this a little bit to wait and see if maybe the midweek European fixtures solve this conundrum yeah. for me. There's always that hope. Yeah, ex- yeah exactly. Maybe. Yeah. That the, like uh, the decision will get made for you. In yeah, other words. Right. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, let's move on to uh, some questions here, Brandon. Um, FPL Brooklyn says uh, there's a lot of focus on who to get this week to build towards the double in 34. But th- for those of us who are in th- free hit 34, are there different players we should target this week that can help us get ahead for the final few weeks? Uh, I got two frees and I'm honestly not sure how to use them. You know, it's a good question. I think um, you could take a punt on a Chelsea player. Right. Because uh, they host Everton and um, I mean, they have, you know, they host Everton in 33 and they have a double in 35. So you could kind of go for it there. Um, I don't think like I mean, again, I don't know what his what you know, what his team looks like. But like, you know, even someone like uh, Madison, like you could see Madison doing some even though he's been in really bad form like doing some kind of damage against newcastle who who just keep losing Absolutely. defenders every week yeah. right and so yeah um but i I'll think those you, are the two teams i'd look at I, I i wonder about manchester city and Rodri in particular so one way to think about making fantasy fun for you in the run-in is you've got to back yourself and Often, I was talking to our friend Nick on the Discord, and he was looking at, he was like, maybe I'm going to write this season off. I think it's time for me to just start getting players in who I like. And uh-huh. Rodri was a player who was really interested, interesting to him. And yeah. the advice is you've got to you've got to really back yourself to say, I am going to bring in Rodri. And Rodri would have rewarded anyone who brought him in this week with another assist. His form true. continues. True. He's like traditionally not like a real fantasy asset, but he's having a great season. Yep. Rodri is cheap. No one is looking at a Man City triple up right now, but Man City do have a double in game week 37. So I think he fits nicely into a squad, especially if you're free hitting in 34. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that makes sense. I mean, I, st- yeah, I don't know why that's, it's so hard for me, I guess, I, but yeah, I, I, I think it does make sense. Like, I don't know. I, I have a real like, um, blockage around like central midfielders and stuff where I just like, you know, it's like, like when they, when they have like the, like a, like a more typical central midfielder match, right. Where they just like do nothing and get booked, you know, then I'm just mm-hmm. like, why, why did I get, you know, someone like this? Uh, I think Foden would be, like if I could have anybody in game like 33, uh, it'd probably be Phil Foden, who I just like, um, you know, cat dropping him. So even though he didn't play a minute this weekend, like I just feel like I'm still reeling from from dropping him. And he's fully <laughs> rested, so he's almost yeah. certainly going to play in this in this uh, Luton match, right? So um, this is the delight you know. of Pep's players is he doesn't make a lot of substitutions. So if your guy gets benched, he's probably not going to come on for a one point cameo, and so then you get to uh, play the bench wink game. Yeah, I mean, so well, this this FPL George Gabriel Brandon said he attempted to transfer Foden in. Says don't like planning too hard around the doubles as it so often backfires. I don't know what George sure. is talking about. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> uh, and I'd rather go with good players with good fixtures than reason, of course. But t- talk me out of it by all means. 
So can we do we should we talk him out of Foden in? Well, the only reason to not do it is it blocks you from if you don't have a free hit, it blocks you from loading up for game wing 34 doubles. That's the o- the only reason at this yeah. point. But I mean, so uh, I, I, yeah. I want to talk George into doing it. I think it is sensible. Yeah. And in Man City play Brighton in game week 34. I mean, mm-hmm. Brighton are terrible. So, so that would be, that should be, that's probably fine, right? Yeah. Like you could just, like Man City versus, versus Brighton in one man. I mean, Phil Foden just scored 20 points in one game week, right? So, um, I, yeah, I, I guess I won't be doing it. I don't know. I guess, I, first of all, I think that Crystal Palace is, is probably a match that's, that's, that's borderline as good as Luton as you were sort of, you know, mm-hmm. suggesting earlier. And so, and then they play twice in 34. So I'm just going to do the like kind of math move of like three, three is better than two and, and, and get um, Diaz myself. But I think the argument for Foden is, is, is strong. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is enough kind of always just perma risk around Pep, right. That you could bring in a player who just won't start yeah. this week, especially if they lose or if they're, you know, if they're losing to Real Madrid and the yeah. Champions League. And for us, we're a little biased against this strategy because we are we will be wild carding in 35. So yeah. we can just sort of like push Foden aside. No double yeah. in 34. We can e- we can easily um, get yeah. him in in 35. So it's we can just like put that conversation off for a few weeks. All right. Well, two more questions. Uh, first one comes from FPL Dougal. He says, uh, if you had all the chips left, how would you proceed? I just having every chip left. Even even <laughs> yeah. the even the first half of the season wild card. Yeah. That's incredible. Sure. I would free hit in 34. I would wild card in 35 or 36 and bench mm-hmm. boost in 37. Now I get the argument of how the bench boost is probably not going to be as appealing in 37 with all the rotation that starts to emerge at the tail end of the season as our bench as our on the beach rankings sort of like really take hold, Josh. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think that to me feels like the biggest upside. Like I feel like yeah. there's more upside with the free hit in 34 than in 37. So that just well, does really does put the bench boost on 37. If he has all the chips, he has a, a, a triple captain as well. Um, all right. Yeah. Triple captain Holland home to Luton 34. I mean, not well, if that's the case, then just triple captain in 37 on a doubler. Uh, so then you free hit for the doubles in 34, triple captain for the double, uh, whoever looks the best in 37. And then you just bench boost, I don't know, whenever you actually have a, a fully fit bench, which good luck. That's yeah, never going to happen. <laughs> right. Because you couldn't bench boost in 35 if you're wild carding that week as well. So mm-hmm. I think it's true. It'd be a, it'd be, it's, it's a champagne problem to have, though, Brandon. Yeah, they, it sure uh, is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can't relate. I'm not. I'm not sure how much if I hadn't played any of my chips so far this I'm not sure how much worse off I would be. I'd be I'd be down about I first of all, first of all I'd be up on my free hit because I, mm-hmm. I would have had more points if I just hadn't free hit. And uh and I gained I think 10 points from my triple captain. So I'd be down 10 points, but I'd have all my chips intact. Yeah. I would take that. I would I would <laughs> give me give me two more chips and 10 fewer points right now, Brandon. I would be uh sure be happily taking that. Um, all right. So, uh, FPL Moo says, um, this is again, it's a question a little more for 35, although I think it is relevant uh, again, especially if you're in a position like, uh, FPL Brooklyn, where you're free hitting in 34, which a lot of people are, um, you know, then, then 33 suddenly becomes a game week where you're really planning for 35, right? Um, if you're, if you're free hitting, right. Because you might as well, why, why, why let a transfer go to waste? Right. So, um, he says, consider, or they say, I don't know, Moo, yeah. male or female, says, consider what we've seen from Chelsea this season other than Palmer. Are we really considering many other Chelsea assets for Game Week 35? No, we're, we're not. Um, I just don't even know which way to go with that. The midfielders, uh, Gallagher has been the most appealing. Enzo Fernandez is Caicedo now. Like, it's such a defensive-oriented midfield with these these yeah uh, um, if they don't keep with, clean sheets it's very weird you know <laughs> yeah and there's been a certain a fair amount of rotation in the defense with the center backs i mean de Sassi, 
like in my like limited view of Chelsea feels like they're possibly their worst defender, but he's the one who gets the most minutes. It's just in minutes, yeah. Gusto Gusto was the guy, but now he's just flagged and is that worth yeah. the risk given what we expect from Chelsea? I don't think we expect enough from them. And that's when that's when I think you really do have to consider the myth of the over planning uh, for the double game weeks or how it might not be worth it. Like just talking yourself into a Chelsea player yeah. simply because they have a double in your, like a what are you giving up? In the process? Up. Yeah, I know. I mean, and they, they have two doubles, which I guess helps a little bit, but like, again, it does feel like, yeah, two, two, two by two times two is four, right? It's like, it's not yeah. Uh, like, so yeah, I mean, and it's a pretty bad double too, right? Villa away spurs. It's not a bad double necessarily from an attacking point of view. Uh, defensively, I don't love it. Um, I think Gallagher might be, might be the one to consider. I mean, I don't know. Um, ma, ma, how do you say, ma, ma, uh, I want to say Maduke, Maduke, right? Yeah. I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm saying that my terrible Midwestern accent, but, uh, he scored a great goal today. Uh, and, uh, you know, one of those like Palmer got the assist, but did, did not, <laughs> did very little, uh, okay. to help with that goal, but he's, he scored a great goal today. So, uh, but he, you know, he's barely played. And so you can't really, you know, trust him. I mean, honestly, Gallagher is almost the only one you could genuinely trust. And, uh, you know, Nicholas Jackson, um, coming off three straight blanks, he does play 90 like every week. So I, I guess that's something, um, he had three attacking returns in a row in game weeks, 25 through 27. So. Um, again, this is where I, I, yeah, let's give it a couple more weeks. Maybe someone starts to emerge in 33 and 34 that makes, that makes them more appealing in 35, right? That's kind of a boring answer, but I, I, I don't love any, I, I wouldn't probably, I probably wouldn't make a Chelsea transfer for 30, um, for 35. I probably try to find someone on um spurs instead that i would try to target right i would yeah. i would just i would just get poro or something like that and hope that he can get on tag and return away to newcastle take cole palmer out of chelsea and their top fantasy performer is raheem sterling do with that what you will yeah he doesn't even play any i mean it's like uh yeah i mean he basically doesn't play anymore yeah. which is crazy and yeah. zero minutes uh in 32 19 and 31 17 and 30 um, so yeah, it's, it's crazy how he's just like, he's just off the table. So. Where does Raheem Sterling play his football in, uh, next season? Tell me where it's, wow. I mean, is, is he going like the full, um, Daniel Sturridge? Like, is it like, I don't know. Like, like what's the West Brom? Is it like a promoted team next year? Like maybe it's like a Leeds or something like that. Right. It's like he, yeah. It's like some that would actually be kind of cool. Like that Saudi would be, Arabia, it seems like the most likely. Yeah. It'd be fun to see him kind of do the um uh oh my gosh, I mean, I'm forgetting his name, but you you'll you'll remember it. Uh who is mm -hmm. the uh the Man United player who went to West Ham and had that great half season a couple of years ago? Um, oh yeah, Jesse Lingard. Jesse Lingard. It'd be fun to see Sterling go to a club where they just let him do whatever he wanted. And yeah. um, you know, <laughs> yeah. and they just kind of needed someone with his like yeah. kind of pace and, and, yeah. and you know quality um, here's a fun, here's a fun yeah. one for nicholas jackson he's on nine yellow cards let's see um, oh no <laughs> i think yeah, like what is the the cutoff is like in the next couple of game weeks but just have to flag that yeah Could when is that games. yeah yeah when when does that cutoff happen it's like 30 it's like 32 or something isn't it or 34 maybe i can't remember so he'd have to survive one more game week uh mm. and which deck yeah, he's, he, he's very greedy with those yellow cards. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's a good note to end on there. A uh, little, little bonus Chelsea discussion. Uh, thank you so much to everyone for listening to the pod. Uh, thank you for everyone who supports the pod. Um, again, if you want to say thank you um, and uh, help support the podcast um, and get an extra one each week, we'll do one on this Thursday. Uh, you can go to patreon.com slash always cheating. Uh, Brandon, would you like to thank our producer patrons? Of course. Big thanks to producers Mike DiPietro, Trevor Ingerson, our buddy Chris Howell, Bob Scoon, James Holland, Dave Wagner, Lodal, Nick Wright, Lazarus, Yanos, Jesse Halstead, Bruce Kerr, Brian Chin, Blair Jacobson, Todd Byerly, Andy Portlock, at FPL Merch, Kerry Swanson, Jefferson Turner, Buffalo Wild Mings, Francis Moore, Sam Shower, Caleb Robbie, Volger, Paulson Kruger, Alex Holcomb, James Keatley, The Saint, Bob Fox, Craig Jackson, Shalin F. Kadakia, Terrence O'Donnell, Heath Graham, 
Thomas Tislov, Noah and Louise, Travis Grant, Linus Venerstrom, Dan Parsons, James C., Matthew Skinner, Fro Jacobson, Brennan, Daniel Hart, Lolly, Ben Coombs, Eric Kite, Gareth H. Rune Sandberg, and Brian Clark. Rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get podcasts. Find a video of this episode on YouTube, youtube.com slash at always cheating. Follow us wherever you get social media, et cetera, et cetera. Whew, man, Josh, it has been a long weekend. Uh, oh, yeah, some, you were, yeah, you flew in. Some people know oh, yeah, I flew we into talk New York about twice. The, the earthquake, <laughs> yeah, I know. Brendan Brendan was literally about to land when um, the earthquake uh, yeah. went off here in New York. So uh, did you say, like, you're literally beginning your descent, yeah. and then they just picked back up and brought you back to Toronto? <laughs> yeah, we were on a little <laughs> propeller plane, and like they only had enough fuel to get us back to Toronto. Like, they couldn't go into a holding pattern. So they're like, we got to go back. So we yeah. flew to New York twice on Friday, which was That's insane. Crazy. Crazy. So um, I'm excited to kind of be back home, though I'm away from my my podcast partner. Uh, but I will be back in New York for Game Week Indeed. 38. Well, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, my birthday weekend, no less. That'll be fun. So all right. If anyone has any Rome tips, uh, let me know as well. I'll be there in a couple of weeks time. So talk to you soon. I'll bye.